Welcome to the second webinar of Circle of Art, an encounter with artist and sonographer Paweł Dobrzycki. Before I introduce our guest, a few words about who we are and what we do. I am Andrew Wisniewski, the director of Kalamata Drama, an umbrella for training and cultural events based in the town of Kalamata in the Peloponnese. Kalamata Drama represents the ongoing collaboration of two organizations devoted to promoting the initiative and innovation in the performing arts, the Maria Callas Alumni Association of the Music School of Kalamata and Theatre Alive, a charity in the United Kingdom. The core of our activity, the annual Kalamata Drama International Summer School is already in its third year. Now with generous support from the Bareva Foundation in Liechtenstein, we're also able to develop the Circle of Art, a program of webinars, events, cultural encounters, and provocations in Kalamata on the subject of theater making. These are scheduled to run until 2023. Today's program is an online conversation between me in Kalamata and Paweł Dobrzycki uh, in the historic town of Kraków in Poland. I'd like to thank our executive manager, George Iliopoulos, for organizing and supervising this encounter, and to Sofia Drakopoulou for controlling its technical aspect. About Paweł Dobrzycki. He trained as an architect and followed this by graduating from the Academy of Fine Arts in Kraków. In a career spanning 40 years, he has designed the staging for over 300 productions in many countries, including native Poland, the UK, Russia, Greece, Israel, Germany, Holland, France, and Switzerland. These include about 50 opera and 20 musical productions, as well as film sets. He usually designs the costumes as well as the lighting, wanting to be responsible for the visual totality of a spectacle. He has taught at several academies, including the Academy of Fine Arts in Kraków, the Theatre Academy in Kraków, the Academy of Fine Arts, and the Theatre Academy in Warsaw. As a teacher, he has been influential in the development of theatre directors, including Krzysztof Warlikowski and Małgorzata Szczęśniak, who both recently have been awarded the so-called Oscar for Opera Production. At the Academy of Fine Arts in Warsaw, Paweł created the Faculty of Stage Design, so far the only one in Poland, bringing together outstanding teachers, outstanding um, practitioner stage designers as teachers. He's also the Polish delegate to OISTAT, the international organization of sonographers, theater architects, and technicians, and is instrumental in the international exchange of students under the auspices of OISTAT and the Central Academy of Drama in Beijing. Architect, fine artist, sonographer, and teacher. Pavle, welcome to Circle of Art. Um, I shall kick off uh, with a first question, which is, do you see yourself as part of an artistic movement? Is it important to you that you were taught by specific people, specific artists, specific teachers, specific sonographers? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for invitation, first of all. Uh, well, answering your question, question uh, yes it's very important for me and i'd like to uh, say something important in the beginning of our of our conversation uh, uh, there are some short short notes between the pictures i'm going to show you so you you can find uh, basic information about the about the designs or about the photographs of the shows of the performances uh, during our during our conversation uh, it's quite important because we cannot uh, put all important details to our conversation uh, so in the beginning you can see the very famous uh, quotation from Shakespeare, very well known. And I'd like to show you in the beginning my 
artistic roots. Uh, I call it Krakow School of Metaphor, and I'm going to explain what it does mean. Uh, I studied in Poland during communism and practicing art, especially theater, gave, it gave us, us mm. freedom in these very dark and complicated times. My teachers liberated us from the oppression of communism and taught us what is art, art which helps to live and helps people. Mm. They were ahead of the times with their art, uh, not only in Poland. I'm sure in the future, the names of Kraków artists will be very well known in the history of, of, of art. <laughs> uh, and the tension and the stress induced by daily life in those days made it possible to see the world more vividly. Well, Kraków was a kind of cradle of an artistic movement. As I told you, I call, I call it uh, art of the metaphor, explaining reality, giving intellectual tools to understand it and to find it. Yes. Uh, I'd like to show you in the beginning, uh, here there's uh, the, the note, very, yes. fam very famous Polish theater designer. Uh, he worked in Covent Garden, in, in uh, Opera Garnier, in, in USA operas, in Germany as well. Great artist and absolutely fantastic painter. Uh, uh, you can see design of painted curtain for Salome by Strauss, but it is known as well as a plague. It is collage, gouache, uh, acrylic painting, uh, uh, and uh, probably a black temper painting. You can see the explosion here. Uh, in the beginning of the show, this metaphoric picture can Build the the tension in the in the auditorium, uh, and this it's very important. And on the other hand, it's a pure example of metaphoric picture. Right. So as you're saying, these are these are you're, you're introducing the artists which were your teachers, which people that have influenced you and, uh, in, in those early days. Okay, Witold Wojtkiewicz. Yes. Poland, Poland did not exist in, in, in the beginning of 20th century. Mm. So Kraków artists had to use a metaphoric way of uh, the of the painting uh, you mean to express uh, identity to express nationality yes. to express polish art itself mm -hmm. yes yes so here there are a lot of different levels in this picture mm -hmm. to explain it but uh, first of all uh, Wojtkiewicz says that in the front of the cruel world we are children from the from the from the cradle to the grave uh, all of these all of these pictures you can find in internet so there are right. examples mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, this is lithograph called pessimists mm -hmm. because you know Polish artists in the beginning of 20th century uh, lived in the total oppression and uh, in fact <laughs> they were all pessimists. Great Polish uh, painter Jacek Malczewski 
and the very well known, very famous picture, huge one. You can see the painter on the top of the ladder and the crowd of the persons, figures from different times uh, surrounding him uh, like the circulus vit vitiosis. Oh yes, vicious, the vicious circle, indeed. But also um, interesting that it's that on one side you have a, a happy bacchanal, and on the other side you have a sort of tragic descent into hell, a little bit in the style of Michelangelo's of Michelangelo's um, Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel. The, the, yes. the, the, the vicious circle, indeed, but also the rising. But the rising goes up. Uh, the happiness. Um, somehow propels people out upwards while despair propels people downwards. But it's not even a religious happiness. It is, it is to do with the happiness of spirit. Exactly. A freedom of spirit, a freedom of expression. Very interesting. This may lead me quite directly into my second question, uh, because you lived, spent your youth and learned to love the theater in the historical context of communism. And uh, ah, here, yeah, indeed, we're, we're coming to something a little bit closer to that period. What role did living under communism, studying under communism play in shaping you both as an artist and, and in giving you a particular outlook on life? Okay, here there's example of an art when I was young. My, yes. my master, Adam hmm. Hoffman, uh, this picture uh, is called Leader charcoal on the, on, the, on the paper. Well, I started working in the theater under communism and censor, censorship. Uh, there's one thing that has to be said, we worked despite the censorship. Censorship returns in various forms, sometimes unexpected ones. Then, and unfortunately, even today, more and more frequently everywhere. Especially You're absolutely now. right. Absolutely, especially, especially in Poland. Poland now. Yeah. Uh, just... Therefore, it turns out that the most effective and efficient tool for conveying content was then, is now and will probably be the use of metaphor. The metaphor made us and make, makes us, and I'm afraid will make us free, liberates us, from almost every manifestation of censorship. Mm. Uh, this is exactly the, the, the feeling of these times. Sorry. Barrenfield. Mm. Barrenfield. Uh, this is a story about uh, lost generations of Polish, Polish artists because of the war, because of the communism, because of the, uh, of the censorship and so on, so on. So many great people died uh, fighting all time to be, to be free without, without uh, results. Well, answering for your questions, for your question, uh, funny satiric drawings. I can say bittersweet. Andrzej yeah. Andre Czechot, pupil, Adam, Adam Hoffman's pupil, uh, create his own way to express his, his uh, uh, emotions and feelings. Uh, and uh, oh, this is very important drawing. Of course, it's a joke. It's a joke, but the very, very sad one. And, uh, and as I told, bittersweet. Yes. Uh, we were trying to, to build our own rainbow <laughs> this way. Mm. And image yourself today is a huge conflict in Poland between people which love the rainbow and people <laughs> which hate the, 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 the rainbow. 
horrible, mm -hmm. horrible situations. So coming back to to, uh, to your question, yes. the metaphor stimulates us into thinking. It affects yes. us more powerfully than saying something directly. Uh, today, we very often come across direct speech. I think the English fra phrase is in your face. Do I remember? Yes, well? it is. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It is often direct aggressive. Express. Yes. It's often aggressive in its bluntness and lack of artistic form. Its effect is superficial. Uh, this is the next Adam Hoffman's pupil, Richard Horowitz. Yes. Uh, he lives in USA. He had to leave Poland <laughs> because of anti-Semitic uh, movement that happened after 1968. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he created really new really new way of the photograph collage, collages Jordan. Uh, it should be known that he did his works like this one for example yes uh, we, without photoshop and mm -hmm. without computer in the uh, 60s 70s so this precede uh, precede cgt yeah Next one. Jordan, yes. <laughs> Great artist. Uh, Andrzej Wrublewski, The Q, uh, story about, about uh, com communism in Poland. We had to all wait for everything. Endless queues, I re remember. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Now, Starowiecki was the master. Theater of drawing. You can you can see the scale here. Starowiejski uh, uh, prepared huge canvas and uh, mm -hmm. this kind of this kind of session it uh, it takes about three four hours. Mm. Uh, and you can see the results and his posters. By the way, the Shakespeare's, as you like it, posters yes. for, for National Theatre. Death in Venice by mm -hmm. after Toma, Thomas Mann. Mm -hmm. And costumes of my costumes of my masters. Yes. Uh, made for Devils from Ludown by Krzysztof Penderecki. Yes, the opera that's based on the on the play. That's on right. the play of John Whiting, yeah. That's correct, yeah. Hmm. Temptation and Ladders. So all these works create a specific kind of world view don't they yeah um, world view yeah. which is dominated by metaphor which reflects contemporary society contemporary society of their time exactly so you can see it's a specific teatro mundi mm. uh, uh, in in all these works i can show you only examples uh, and of course there were a lot of artists using metaphors to show the, 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 the pictures, paintings, drawings on of exhibitions. Course. And is this uh, what led you to your language in theater? Is that what led you to theater? Yeah, this is, this is my small story. Mm -hmm. uh, my first visit in Greece, maybe I will explain it later. Yeah, after my, after my masters, I started to, to make the, the drawings and paintings as well, but I'd like to show the drawings. Mm -hmm. This black and white uh, pressed charcoal 
technology of 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 drawing i like it i i, I like it a lot it's a, a very expressive and uh, 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 useful self portrait you know in the end of 20th century and in the beginning of 21st century uh, self portrait it's me dark tunnel dark water broken childish ship and me in the front of the in the front of the paper it was reality of my life indeed but did, um, you, did you find yourself sorry to interrupt but did you in that case communism falls in poland you're brought up under communism with a particular world view a particular view upon society politicians and certainly the function of art but here in this drawing communism has fallen in poland there's a tremendous drive to a um, first democratic country in the east and yet you show yourself the artist as someone afloat someone afloat in a sewer almost um uh, was there did you feel lost after after the fall of communism before we we come back to theater as an artist as a creator well, why why afloat? the problem is more complicated uh, i can explain it this way that uh, com communism was dead uh, we had a new shape of of country, a new shape of state, new democratic powers, and so on, and so on. But the mentality of, of nation remained the same. And this is problem till, till today. Till today, uh, even young people born after the collapse of the communism, they have this horrible communistic mentality. And it's a huge problem of the post-communist countries in the Central and East Europe. Mm. You can see the you can see the an examples uh, in Poland, in uh, Hungary, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, All right. So let's get back. Let's get back to, to theater creativity indeed this is your theatrical figure yes well uh, i can say i can say this way that uh, uh, my drawings are somewhere on the halfway between between theater and artistic artistic drawing Absolutely, uh, yes. So uh, they can be useful in the theater uh, as well. Sometimes insp inspiration came from, from theater, from rehearsal room, uh, and of course, upside down. Of course, of uh, course, of course. Polish, this is the same Polish, Polish motif. In Polish language, uh, I could use uh, uh, the the title "Backside of the Cross." Uh, the reverse. Yes. Uh, in English, in yeah. English less in English language, the demonstration is 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 better because "backside of of cross" means more in in Polish language. Of course, of course. And here, here, but the reverse also is very interesting. Ah, I can see uh, Witkacy. <laughs> yeah, Polish writer Witkacy, he has written uh, a very famous play, Madman and Nun, and this is my version of this story. <laughs> <laughs> Old Pinocchio, Nightmare. Mm. So looking at your in art, which you make independently of theater, it is actually very closely bound to a theatrical vision. The imagination is imagination of the theater. It is almost to be everything you, you, you draw for yourself to express your feelings, to express your reactions to what is around you, 
actually could be staged, could almost be staged or performed, as we see by the saint smiling yeah. quizzically at us. Mm. Uh, and and uh, looking at your at your artwork, it is all about stirring the imagination of the viewer in response to what they see. Um, I, I wanted to go back to to the idea that perhaps do you feel that imagination somehow brings people together, unites uh, them? Yes. Uh, thank you for this for this. Uh, question because uh, uh, this is I can say this is my obsession in whole languages there are two words Ima uh, imagination and fantasy yeah and in my opinion for me imagination uh, unites people this is my experience Experience from the theater, first of all. Mm -hmm. Imagination unites people because uh, people in the auditorium can image themselves situations like uh, the person's characters on the on the stage. Fantasy, it's, sometimes it's very difficult to find the key to, to understand uh, artists' fantasy uh it's uh, the problem of conscious uh and so on and so on and so on absolutely uh, of course there are very beautiful objects of art uh we can call uh, call them the the the, the opus of <laughs> of uh, fantasy but my duty in the theater is to Build the relationship between be, between stage and uh, auditorium. So of course I have to use the imagination. Okay, so let's let's now return return to your earlier days. Will you tell me why you made a transition from architecture to stage design? I, I ask this question um, um, uh, with a, with an ulterior motive because I, we, we, once we get to your stage design. Uh, your actual stage designs will understand what role architecture has also played in that. But why did you make the transition? As an architect, uh, under the under the communism, because uh, this kind of architecture was re really cruel for 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 people. Mm. Uh, I can say even unhuman unhuman the you know the the designing of architecture uh, uh, for people under the ideologic uh, pressure it's uh, it was the nonsense so and I, did I you find that away. art was I a field of away. freedom that being an artist rather yeah. or a, a stage artist gave you a different freedom yes yes so, you know krakow was vibrant with artistic life you can you can meet absolutely fantastic people penderecki preisner famous mm. famous mm. Uh, of course. composer of of film music Szymborska, uh, miłosz uh, mm. both of them got the the nobel uh, prize award yeah. uh, and many fantastic and famous painters artists musicians and so on so uh, it was life in poland it, it, it created very very specific atmosphere here of course so uh, I started to build the the metaphoric architecture on the stage. Yes. I can I can I can describe my my first steps in the theater this way. Pavla, tell me, when creating the world in which the play will live, where does your priority lie? Well, uh, it lies in the metaphor contained in the stage image. For me, the set and costumes are actors. 
who have their own significance in the viewing of the entire performance. They participate in conveying the meaning and message of the performance. So I can say this. A set is a composition of elements taken or selected from reality. And this my mm -hmm. choice and composition create a message mm -hmm. and a metaphor. Uh, very simple example. I can design the space of the performance using only refrigerators. Refri refrigerators create the floor, create the ceiling, create the walls. And this is, for example, set for performance against the climate changes. Well, that's imagination, imagination metaphor. Now, um, uh, but do you always see, let me ask differently. Most designers see the play that they are designing within the, its own given context. But for you, I think the present always creeps in, doesn't it? Uh, perhaps even your other present that you have known. I mean, uh, life under communism. Well, you know, of course, as a director, you know very well that theater takes place here now, right? You cannot escape the contemporary context. I was asked several times to transfer the performance a few years after its success to another stage in another theater in another city. It turned out that the production no longer had the same impact and that a number of elements in the direction set its costumes had to be changed in order to convey convey the same message by adjusted artistic means you cannot have the same costumes worn by other actors mm. because they start to mean something completely else uh, for example I designed Don Giovanni some years ago. We have Don Giovanni, short one, fat and rather slow. And another Don Giovanni, slim and tall, and tall a real rotomaniac with training in dance and movement. They cannot wear the same costume and pretend it's the same show. The farce will be obvious. Well, yes, you're absolutely right. Um... Tell me, tell me, um, what exemplifies the art, your art as a sonographer and as an artist? Are there any quotes, any, any, any poets that you can mention who express exactly what you would like to do? Well, you know, we, we have really great poets. And yes, there are two very short poems written by Czesław Miłosz, Polish poet of... Lithuanian descent who lived in USA for over 30 years. Mm. Uh, he became professor at the University of Berkeley. He combines the European experience uh, with all the misfortunes of war and totalitarianism and the mm. American experience. Miłosz was awarded the Nobel Prize. Yes. Uh, in 1981. Yeah. And this first poem is called Forward, right? I will try to read it. Sorry, my English. Do you have it? Do you have, do you have the quote? Can we see it? Ah, yes, that's right. Very good idea. What is poetry which saves neither nations nor people? It's cooperation with realistic lies. It's the song of drunkards whose throats somewhere will cut at the any moment. It's a reading book from the ladies' chamber. 
And uh, the second one, translated by you very well. Uh, Andrew, please read it because it's very difficult. Okay. Amid the screams, ecstatic babble, squeak of trumpets, the banging on pans and drums, the highest form of protest was to maintain a sense of balance. But the everyday human voice was losing its right and was like a fish snout gaping from behind the aquarium wall. I accepted what was apportioned to me. Nevertheless, I was only human. That's to say, I suffered and drifted towards being like myself. Yes, and in short words, this is my artistic program. I can add the short sentence of the next great Polish poet, Zbigniew oh. Herbert. Art is a tool of compassion. Of course, Herbert has written about the poetry, but in fact, he has written about art. So you could say that that is your artistic program? Right, right. These two quotations, I would like to add a brief em emotive line from the poet. These fragments of poetry express uh, my artistic program and I can express it in the short points art that helps to live. The artist striving for contact with mm. another human being. And of course, as a, art as a tool of compassion as well. Theater is a place where all these values can be brought to fruition in the living presence of the viewer mm. or audience, if you prefer. Escape to the theater to a place of artistic, spiritual, and intellectual freedom, it's the only permitted form of escapism for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, this is a reason I teach. So teaching is an important part of your creative life. Does it contribute yes. to, your, to your creativity as well? Yes. I have a small surprise for you. Mm -hmm. This is my mm -hmm. own pedagogic Mount Everest, uh, Diploma Design, uh, my, my, my student, Paula Kukla. Yeah. Uh, she has got the Crystal Cube main award in the World Stage Design Students Exchange in Beijing, mm. 2018. Uh, it's a design for Uburex by Penderecki. And you can see, this kind of conscious, this kind of the of the uh, vision of the reality around us, you know, uh, the huge conflict between empires on the mountains of garbage. Fantastic design, very, very, very talent, very talented person. This is an expression yes. of her yes. understanding of reality. So coming back that, to your that question, teaching is very important to me. I pay my debt, of course, to my masters. But above all, I try to give my students intellectual, artistic and technical tools so that can understand the surrounding reality with, without bias or constraint and in the work that they create to express their attitude towards that reality, but yeah. especially to give them the tools to find a way to understand other people and to com and to communicate with them, which mm. is becoming more and more difficult today. So I can say this way, for me, this is the moral obligation of a teacher and the moral obligation of art. I am afraid a lot of artists forget about it too often. And I know you love George Streller, and I can say it's a very good moment to say it that famous Italian director George Streller wrote the book called Per un teatro 
teatro humano, mm. for a human theater, or for a theater for humans. <laughs> uh, he used to say that the director, designer, and composer, actors, uh, used to tell people stories about other people. It means that we have to put our spectators upon the stage, metaphorically speaking, of course, in order to give them a better understanding of their life. Yes, well, telling the story, indeed, there is a general trend to make old plays relevant, uh, particularly to young audiences who may have little knowledge of historical or social context of the original. Uh, in the UK, such an approach is almost obligatory. Uh, however, the design outcome is usually a disappointing hodgepodge of um, grey suits, ladies' fashions, news cameras, guns, mobile phones, and microphones for speech making by, by kings and queens, while the directorial concept either limits itself to the average of surrounding life or plastic clad science fiction. What is your approach to making an old play relevant, to use a hateful word? I'd, I'd like to focus on the staging. This is the, the most important point for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to show you my design uh, for Antigone by Sophocles. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, here's the note and uh, uh, short, short, uh, uh, how to say, short plot. Yes, of the of this play. Uh, uh, of the state, um, you mean of the concept rather than the play itself? Concept, that, right. So indeed, we have migrants, migrants arriving in Greece and giving thanks for their arrival. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I used the, an idea of the theater of inside theater. Immigrants or refugees uh, run away from the world and uh, thanksgiving to God, they, they live, they they try to they try to create the performance right show us some uh, illustrations that are ah, right so i'd like focus on the staging uh, the stage image should be a medium or vehicle or platform that brings the show's message closer to the audience mm, uh, uh, this easy if neither the mindset of the heroes or the characters of the drama themselves do not belong to the contemporary mm. world. This is a well-known problem here in Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, and in England, I am thinking about uh, Shakespeare or in France, about oh. Moliere, and creates a difficulty for every production of Asian tragedy or comedy. If the staging is done mechanically using modern dress, cell phones, cameras, etc., the effect is counterproductive, artificial, even comical. But if we focus on the if we focus on the topic, for example, the mechanism of power, psychology mm. of the characters, extreme human emotions, then the concept of the staging indicates the limit limits within which we can use elements of the present. Mm. And here is Antigone, refugees, the trolleys. Mm. Mm. Later they use the trolleys to build the stage. Mm. Uh, yes. Fantastic. And so on. And another uh, yes. example, Oedipus Rex. Yes. Uh, the the theater Asian theater in uh, Asian theater in in the Pydaurus and the Oedipus Palace. It is uh, you know I was thinking about the Greek audience first of all. Mm. This, this shape is very well known. This building is very well known for 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 Greeks. This is a burnt out. Uh, front wall of the uh, library in Ephesus, and uh, this is a visual visual symbol of Oedipus hubris. So his hubris, his hubris has brought about 
not just the building, but the destruction of the great the great library as well. Yes. So it's exactly. a burnt out, burnt out version of, of the library. I exactly. see. And if we move into a closer to a realistic world, our world of music and uh, realism. Okay, next uh, next example. La, La Traviata, uh, uh, we know what's the plot of this of this story. Usually the 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 performance take place in interiors. Yes. Uh, here I designed it uh, in open air during the permanent carnival. You mm -hmm. know, this is a platform like in Brazil, yes. Carnival, for example, with huge, huge puppets, uh, movable puppets. Uh, and on the back side of this platform, there is a, a Violetta's wardrobe or, or closet. This permanent carnival. Uh, kills the real love between between the characters this is uh, uh violetta's violetta's private mm -hmm. space on the shore of on, of, of the lake uh, when violetta comes back oh, yes in act three uh, yes in act three yes the huge huge roulette uh, and Violetta uh, stands on this on this roulette uh, in the most important moment of this third act, mm. and her death on this on this uh, mm. shore of of lake. Uh, so suddenly, uh, I, I wanted to get an an effect that the whole world is completely crazy and does not take care about the human human private feelings emotions and 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 love of course of course and violetta's violetta's death another important very important for me uh, uh, example uh, boris godunov by by bosorsky with mm. very excellent and great director from 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 Russia, from Petersburg, Yuri Alexandrov. Yes, excellent, excellent pianist and uh, director of the of the Saint Petersburg Opera. Mm. Uh, we had to stage this opera famous mm. hall. In, in, in Wrocław, yes. huge building. Here you can see the yes. first sketches. The problem of, of, this, of this production was that opera is written in nine Scene. pictures yes, nine. or nine scenes. Yes. At the Kremlin uh, Orthodox Church, battlefield, uh, the, the castle in, in, in Poland, and so on and so on. Yes. It was impossible to change the set in this in this huge hall. So I designed metaphoric railway station, and all right. these spaces arrive to this railway station on but... wagon platforms. Mm. And, the, and the main building, you can say, is quite similar to, yes. to Lenin Mausoleum on the Red Square. And the figure on the top, this monument, uh, uh, has possibility to keep completely different heads. New of tsar, course. new yeah. head on the on the on the monu monument. Very brilliant. Mm. The 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 tsar's tsar's uh, office, and so on and so on. Very brilliant. The, end, the, of, end, the, the end, end of the story, and here you can see new Tsar's head is prepared to attach it on the top of the of the of the uh, figure. Excellent. 
another another uh, experience mm -hmm. uh, you know i wanted not to build the the village of anatevka in in the fiddler of the roof mm -hmm. so uh, we've got an idea to change the plot a little bit mm -hmm. uh, you, you can see the the figures of, of persons on the stage kept the 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 shelters on 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 the heads but in, so in fact you, you told the story the story was retold in a completely different setting in a modern yes. setting yes this is the beginning of the of the of the show that's yeah. what i'm seeing i'm seeing a basketball a basketball hall. <laughs> yes, exactly the devia in the united states devia uh, uh, tells the story of the family uh, to his grandson during his bar mitzvah. Ah, now I understand. I see. Yes. It takes place <laughs> on the basket basket. Of course, of course, they hired the whole. Oh, here you can see the, the face. Yeah. The, the first, I'm sorry, the first scene, and scenes from the from the past. This yes. famous on the the end of the. Uh, village, Anatevka, yes. travel to United States and welcome really? to United really? States. <laughs> uh, Very good. Cool. So it was the frame. Uh, I, understand. The I understand. You create a metaphoric frame for the story yes. itself to yes. bring it closer to the audience. And it was possible, you know, to 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 create unrealistic unrealistic story of course. here. Of course. You can see dancing, dancing, and devious, devious imagination. While we're watching the uh, Lady Macbeth of Ntsensk illustrations, because I think that I know them and I know they're very expressive. Can you tell me a little bit about your process as a stage designer? Because besides getting to know the play and its own particular context, uh, in other words, the author, the time of the writing, the society of the time. Where do you begin to seek inspiration? Because I can see the inspiration here. It, imagination on reading the play obviously is important, but where else do you look to stimulate and broaden your imagination? This is important for students of scenography. For example, from Moscow to Novosibirsk, uh, where uh, I, I worked, mm -hmm. uh, by train it's uh, four days four days it's the same distance like from moscow to to madrid for example That's... or even even longer this yeah, is yeah. the first uh, experience second uh, the very famous story about about different tubes in in in, in Russia mm. to transport oil uh, and, so, and so on. Third, whole knowledge about the uh, camps, about Gulag. Yes. Uh, next, uh, Russian mafia. You can, yeah. you can feel the, the Russian mafia every, everywhere, everywhere. Mm. If you see on the street in Novosibirsk, Novosibirsk, Rolls Royces, Porsche, uh, Lamborghini, uh, etc. as most expensive cars. And you can see, for example, women and men spending 20, 30 thousand dollars mm. uh, making the the shopping in the center of Novosibirsk suddenly and you can see the actors of or singers uh, eating the breakfast and and dinner in the cantina because they have no money to buy food mm -hmm. in the shops it it makes completely tragic situation so sense of the opera right make sense of the of these people feeling yes. left out of life yes uh, you know because this is the uh, you can you know the most rich people in the in the opera mm. 
uh, kept the same distance like oligarch and uh, common people in Russia now. Mm. And this is a story from the end of 19th century mm. uh, about love which is killed by by cruel cruel reality of course the reality and destroys it's, it it's exactly the same problem the same problem today yeah. huh? so these these characters they travel across the russia in very comfortable train and finally the end of trip is in 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 gulag uh, and you know the 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 costumes were designed this way uh, mm. that on the on 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 the stage you could feel that there is a mm. 2050 mm. it's a future yes so i tried to do in the theater more or less what banksy does on the walls of cities look it's you upon the stage you are being seen this is very important to me the set design directing acting etc is not an artistic creation in itself it's not an abstract painting it is intellectual work made with the help of painting tools or computer if you wish for the director it is an intellectual creation made made with the help of the psyche and bodies of the actors for mm. actors it is an intellectual and emotional creation made with the help of the experience personality and right ability. so that is your first step that is your 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 path towards the creation what are the next steps from the first sketches if you make sketches right up to the making of the model to the uh, taking the model to the workshop and seeing it constructed so uh, what what do you do after the first sketches the first images you can see the first sketches <laughs> technical That's sketches. Right. yes this is for uh, the ship of fools is it ship of fools right uh well after the first sketches it's time to talk to the director together <laughs> we must first image the whole performance scene by scene character by character right and then i progress from sketches to full design and technical designs the technical design or model is then inter interpreted by the workshop always of course under my supervision so what did you do with the ship of fools here uh, ship of fools uh, it's a medieval poem written mm. by Sebastian Brandt. And uh, we create the, the, the play. I did put the audience into the ship. So the whole auditorium, it, it was the, the, an interior of the, of the ship. So you made you made the, the the audience the passengers into this unknown territory into hell or whatever. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the, of course, there was a crew uh, of 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 devils, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, this this trip was was totally helpless. Of course, uh, this is the story about the end of of human civilization uh, show us some pictures please mm -hmm. yeah this is a section uh, of the auditorium and, and stage mm. in technical lights uh, during the fitting up of the set you can yes. see the walls of the of the ship mm -hmm. and on the bottom of the ship you can see the the chairs of the auditorium mm. And of course, ah, here the, uh, the, uh, the 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 devils they they play different different characters, fools, mm. riders of of the apocalypse, mm. Uh, mm. the scenes, mm -hmm. seven scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, and then the perspective opens. The perspective in, at the back. 
of the audit of the of the um, stage opens up. Yes, yeah, the the bone the bone of the ship uh, was opened, and this is a island of skeletons. Of course, the uh, destination the destination of the ship. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So, metaphoric sense is obvious that we yeah. we all travel uh, using the ship uh, we can say today even in pathetic ways that our our planet uh, earth is our 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 mm. ship and at the moment our trip is completely completely crazy indeed indeed yes. so um i come i come right so let's 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 end with your production of Turandot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, in, 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 in the production and of course uh, uh, how to say it the uh, horrible city. Uh, well it is a damned city yes. Yeah. I see. So there's the moon looking into the walls, the walled city, the for forbidden city is what you're talking about. The forbidden city. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And uh, on the top, ah. there is a machinery to kill the to kill the of course. Uh, the boys, and under the machinery, there is a very beautiful garden beautiful and garden powerful. to the to the real powers of this of these worlds and let's end mm -hmm. i i have to say i love i love till today the work this mm. this work uh, mm. i think it, it's one of the best of my of my works devils from Ludin by, yes. by Penderebs, penderecki and answering of your uh, early question, you, the, you can see the the uh, progress in my work. It is the mm -hmm. first sketch, uh, the landscape of ladders, uh, and of course, there's no contact between between uh, uh, the earth and heaven. Mm -hmm. Second. I have to say I I anticipated this horrible horrible uh, accident where seven uh, American astronauts uh, were killed. Mm. Uh, a contemporary contemporary church and tower of this church. It was the old destroyed space shuttle. Uh, mm. But it was too too modern. <laughs> yes, I understand. Modern for English theater because it was it was created in 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 theater mold. Ah, Helena, yes. Helena Kauthausen directed. Yes. By the way, it was the it was the uh, the performance of the year. First mm -hmm. of all, because absolutely fantastic actress Catherine Hunter of course. and it was the last mm. uh, design for opera, mm. for opera. Uh, burnt out church mm -hmm. and the photographs of the show yes very good and and you took the the, the space outside you went outside of the theater for yeah. the burning we we asked per the Redsky, yes, and he he gave us the permission to break the music ah. just before last scene yes. of, the, of the of the opera. Uh, the Prince Garnier is taken to be killed in the in 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 the fire. That's right, to be burned to the stake. Yeah. Yes, and we we took the audience outside of the theater. And uh, instead of real singer uh, in the doors of the theater, of course, you didn't Sorry? burn the. 
<laughs> there, there was there was a very realistic puppet. Yes. And mm. this puppet was burnt burnt out outside mm. of the outside outside of the theater. You know what does mean the fire on the stage? It's uh, it's uh, it's nothing. Yeah. yeah, it's nothing. And here we have the real flame, huge fire, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so on and so on. And the music was uh, is it was possible to hear the music from, of course, huge huge speakers. Of course. Now, my, my, my last question is not really a question. It's a, it's a statement and maybe, maybe uh, I'll see whether you agree with it or not. Um, uh, my statement is that it is not the obligation of the artist to provide the answers, but it is the obligation of the artist to pose the questions. Is that something that you would respond to? Yeah, you 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 are absolutely absolutely uh, right. You know, I know you also love George Streller, Streller, and uh, we can we can say together after after Streller uh, that we used to tell a story about people to give the audience an 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 opportunity to question themselves about their own lives and the world that they live in absolutely uh, i have to i have to say something it's, it's a very very important story mm -hmm. uh, touching story uh, about tadeusz kantor uh, mm. the creator of famous uh, uh, of of theater yes. uh, in krakow known everywhere in the world uh, mm -hmm. He created two or three years be, before his death. He created performance called uh, "There Is My Birth My Birthday Today." And, it's my birthday today. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, on the stage we could we could see his mother, his father, his uncles and aunts, his colleagues, uh, friends from the school, mm -hmm. priests from the church, all dead people. Mm. And it was a very famous interview uh, after, the, after the opening. A uh, young lady asked Cantor mm -hmm. that uh, it probably it was very difficult for him to watch on the stage uh, his mother, father, uncles, etc., etc., etc. It's horribly horrible experience. Uh, uh, very to difficult. see them dead. Sorry, to see them dead on stage. To see them dead on the stage, and so on and so on. And Cantor yeah. looked at her because into this interview was in the TV. Look at yes. her, and he said, uh, he answered this way, dear madam, I have to make the audience crying to leave theater on, on knees because and then everybody in auditorium has mother, father, uncle, and everybody in auditorium has birthday. Uh, so I, I have to create my performance perfectly and I have no time to cry. I have to make people cry, telling, in, telling them the story where they are heroes of this, of, of this story. And this is uh, where we can ask the questions to our, our, our auditorium. Indeed. Because there's only in the theater we have chance to get an, any answer from, from, from the audience. I'd like to thank you, Pablo, for being our guest.
It's been Thank an extraordinary experience speaking to you and it's been a very fulfilling experience working with you in the past and I hope we'll work together in the future again. I do hope. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, George, for organizing this encounter. And thank you, Sophia, for helping us to avoid technological pitfalls. <laughs> Although my light has been getting darker and darker, but I've created this pitfall for myself and I'm in a very dark pit, relying on the day's sun to keep me lit, but the day's sun has gone bye-byes. Thank you, our audience, for joining us. And I hope we shall have the pleasure of your company again when we shall be hosting the dramaturg of the National Theatre of Greece, Irini Mudraki, later this year. Until then, goodbye. Thank you once again. Thank you.